Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, YouTubers. It's Anonymous T. Hope you're having an amazing day today. So today we are talking some news of Justin Timberlake, you guys. This is coming from CNBC. He sold his entire music catalog, you guys. So let's get into it. Let's talk about it. So it says, Justin Timberlake sells song catalog fund backed by Blackstone and deal valued at $100 million, you guys. And, you know, basically he's the latest to sell his, you know, music rights. Bye, 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 you know? So it says pop superstar Justin Timberlake, who got a start in the boy band in sync, has sold the rights from his song catalog to Hypnosis Song Management. The British firm announced Thursday the deal was completed on behalf of Hypnosis partnership with private equity firm Blackstone. Hypnosis Songs Capital, it is said to be valued at more than $100 million. The Wall Street Journal, which first reported the news, added that the agreement does not cover future releases from Timberlake. The superstar said he's excited about the partnership. I look forward to entering this next chapter, he said in a release. Timberlake's hits include Cry Me a River, Sexy Back, Can't Stop the Feeling, and NSYNC songs such as Bye Bye Bye. Timberlake 41 is the latest music star to sell the rights to his songs for a huge sum of money. In December, Bruce Springsteen sold his Cadillac to Sony for $550 million. A month later, in January of this year, Bob Dylan sold his catalog of recorded music to Sony as well. That once came after Dylan sold his songwriting catalog to Universal Music Publishing Group in December 2020. Tina Turner sold her catalog for about $50 million and B to BMG in October. And I believe Bruno Mars also sold um, a portion of his catalog. But the way his deal worked out is he still owns stake in the music. So he still has rights to the music. But a lot of these other artists are completely like just selling everything. Everything must go, you guys. A fire sale of these artists' hard-earned work of writing music and producing not only hits for themselves, but hits for other artists. So what do I think of this? Why is this happening? What is going on, you guys? Well, technically, we're still in a pandemic. We're still in a pandemic, you guys. And... We are, what, in year two and counting still? And I think you guys fail to realize, I think for some of these celebrities, even though sometimes these celebrity network things, they might be accurate, sometimes they're not. Um, sometimes they over-report, sometimes they under-report, but a big part of these artists' income is touring. And even though these people write and produce songs for themselves and other artists, some of these artists are also on a team of like 20 writers, you guys. So maybe now the royalties aren't what it has been, you know, for songs that came out 20, 30 years ago. And I think the other side of it is this is probably the best bet that Justin Timberlake has to sell his catalog because I anticipate whatever future music comes out for him is not going to be on the same level as it was at the prime of his career because basically they used him for you know what they needed him to do they used him to humiliate Britney Spears they used him to assist in blackballing Janet they used him to try to destroy Prince and you know insult Prince like there's things that they've used him for but they don't need him anymore they do not need him anymore and basically this is his time to cash out this is his time to cash out and I think people do not realize, like, how many of you guys listen to radio stations in 2022? I listen to Sirius XM, but I don't listen, like, not really, sometimes every once in a while, local radio, but it's usually for sports. It's usually for sports stations, not for music. So, um, but as far as music goes, I'll listen to it if it's on Sirius or if it's streaming on you know apple music or something right or spotify right so i think people are you know preemptively trying to sell high right now and trying to get as much out of their catalog as they can because remember before it used to be about the ownership you guys it used to be about you owning your own music owning your own masters so that you could broker your own deals, you know, if you wanted to negotiate commercials or movie deals or, you know, to promote certain products or what have you. 
you had that leverage. But now what's happening is a lot of these companies, some, you know, with music industry um, record labels, some with these other companies that are forming together to rack up all of these, you know, catalogs is they're looking at this from the perspective, hey, 20, 30, 40 years from now, these songs are going to be way more worth way more than just 100 million. And, you know, I think really so far, it sounds like Bruce Springsteen really got the best out of his deal um, in terms of he got like the maximum, you know, out of all of the deals that I've seen. But I think also this is to protect, you know, their estates. So maybe some people are getting their affairs in order now just in case. Um, And so what better way than to sell off your, you know, your catalog, get some quick money, get some quick millions, use that to pay off whatever debt, also put some money away in whatever state, maybe set up some wills and some things for your children or what have you, if you have offspring. So I think it's a lot bigger. I think we are underestimating how much money people lost that depend on touring, right? Because there's some artists who just strictly tour now. And then even though they may still put out music, it's not selling the same way that it was when they were at the peaks of their careers, you guys. And even now, even though concerts are starting to come back, it's still not nearly the way it was pre-pandemic, you guys. So it's like there's still a lot more work we have to do because, you know, these people have lost money. And streaming has really, you know, galvanized and revolutionized how we listen to music, you guys. It superseded radio. Because now you don't have to listen to the radio now for music, right? You can stream, you can go to YouTube, you can go to, you can hear different clips on different social media platforms. So it long gone are the days of, hey, like, we need to keep pushing this song on radio for this to go number one. No, 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 no. With the new rules, depending on how quickly you stream or buy on iTunes that first week that the song comes out or the album comes out, that now contributes to album sales. So that is a new algorithm that wasn't there previously pre-streaming, you guys. But I honestly think for some people, it might be some money issues, right? We'll never know, of course. Some of it could be financial related issues. Some of it can be that they've already gotten word from their record label like, hey, we've put all into you that we plan on putting into you and whatever you release with us moving forward, we don't anticipate it being on the level of it was before, whether it's good music or not, we're not backing you anymore. So they're looking at the pandemic, they're looking at nearly two years of not being able to go on tour, not be able to make that revenue, because as you guys know, um, Lisa Left Eye Lopez famously broke down how these album sales go, who all gets paid before you get your cut. And that's if you even have, you know, an opportunity to write or produce that particular song, if you're even on the team of writers and producers, and if you're not, it's even significantly less of a payout, right? So they're thinking about all of those factors and they're saying, hey, I don't know what, you know, even though some things are coming back from the pandemic, I'm still not touring. I'm still not working. So I need to protect my interests and sell my music while the going is good, right? So it's just crazy because for so long, you guys, Especially with um, our black artists, we always talked about, you know, ownership, own your own music, this and that. And so there's been so many fights over the decades of people trying to own their music, right? Or you'll see a lot of these legends, they'll finally start to own their music in their later years. And the next thing you know, they pass, they pass away or what have you. So I feel as though part of it's probably a quick money grab. Part of it is probably they were advised that this is going to be the best that it's going to be for them at this point in time if they're no longer being backed in the same way that they were previously by those record labels. And we also have to take into account how much streaming has really impacted this music industry, you guys. I mean, look at TikTok. You can be a one-hit wonder just off of a catchy portion of a song that trends and goes viral on TikTok, you guys. 
So it's like there is so much, you know, with streaming, with going viral these days off of a single. Not everybody's buying full albums anymore. Long gone are the days where your faves are going to be selling diamond albums. It seems like yesteryear of artists that did that, like Janet Jackson and Whitney Houston and Michael Jackson and others that have, you know, had all these multi-platinum albums. It seems like it is it's not going to be the same. You know, now it's all about getting a quick hit. Now it's all about getting a quick hit, getting something quick that's trending. Maybe you get a little TikTok dance to elevate yourself even further, and that's it. So probably artists now probably don't have an incentive to own their music because they're looking at it from the perspective of, hey, if my song goes viral, um, you know, and but maybe my album sales aren't where they need to be, but based off of this song that goes viral, I can parlay that and utilize this song and broker other deals or parlay that into other opportunities. Whereas before, your ownership of the catalog was everything because it was pre-streaming, right? So we didn't know. Well, Prince kind of predicted it. Prince predicted this would happen, which is why he was big on ownership. And he was so ahead of his time, you guys. But, you know, that was the whole thing with ownership is just protecting your assets and protect protecting your estate protecting your legacy and everything else but now with all of the platforms that you can listen to everybody's music anytime you want to when's the last time people you heard buy a cd you know and even people that are buying vinyls it's more so for collector items right so it's just it's different ways i guess to for us to still be able to access the music but these artists you know a lot of them are struggling you guys even your multimillionaires a lot of them are struggling because for some it's two years and counting no touring for some it is two years and counting for no touring and even your faves that you may think is worth hundreds of millions of dollars they might be in the news soon too selling part of their catalog because they're seeing the impact of streaming. Now, on the flip side of this, if you're an artist that say that you are very successful in this and that, but, but your streams aren't on the same level as other artists, or they may be streaming your older work, but not so much your recent albums, is it really a benefit for you right now to sell your catalog if people aren't really streaming your music compared to other artists? So it's all a game. It's all a financial game. It's a numbers game because some people you're going to hear selling their catalog and nine times out of 10, it's going to be probably because it's going to be the best buy right now. And they're trying to protect their legacy. They're trying to put some things in place for their estate. Other people we may not even hear for several years now, um, you know, whether or not they choose to sell their catalog because they may look at it as like, hey, my music's still lucrative. You know, there's no way, there's no need for me to sell my music right now. I'm still, you know, making all kinds of deals. But for some people, you know, this is an opportunity to make that bread. So they're going to do it. And that's what we have. But let me know what your guys' thoughts are. What do you guys think of Justin Timberlake selling $100 million of his catalog? I think it was like over 200 songs, you guys. What do you guys think about this? And what do you think of other artists that are doing this? Please let me know in the comments. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you're notified the moment I post new content on my channel. And with that being said, I'll talk to you guys again very soon.